Hey, we started a series last week called Focus. Focus. You know, that's a, you, could, you could go down all kinds of different roads on this idea of focus. And last week we talked about prayer. Prayer is all about focus. Because sometimes, okay, so here's the deal. Sometimes we, we think of prayer differently. I mean, people define prayer very different. And I'm, I want to give you a biblical illustration, a, bil, a, a biblical application of prayer. Sometimes people look at prayer that the focus on prayer is the ability to bring your things, your stuff to God, to make your requests known. And I'm going to tell you, if that's your definition of prayer, you're missing a very huge part of prayer because prayer is about us coming to God, boldly approaching the throne to focus on his presence. And when you focus on his presence, all the stuff that you bring with you, I mean, it just, it comes in through that perspective because sometimes the stuff I have that you have that we want to bring to God seems so big, so overwhelming to us. But when I focus on his presence, all of a sudden the stuff I'm dealing with (laughs) doesn't compare to how big my God is. Amen. So we talked about focus and prayer and this week. I want to talk to you about this aspect that I think a lot of us deal with and this aspect of focus and balance, focus and balance. There's a lot of people that present one thing in their life when an entirely other thing is the reality. We, we present things, we cover things with our words, we cover things with makeup, we cover things with clothes, with with somebody says, you know, how you doing? You say, oh, I'm doing good. When in reality, you're not doing good at all. And, and it comes back to this idea of balance and people get caught off guard. We'll, we'll say they got caught off balance when a reality is uprooted. You, you say one thing, but the reality is exposed of another. I saw this cool little kind of statistic here or suggestions maybe would be a better word for it. Uh, if you, if you get caught sleeping at your desk, what you should say, caught sleeping at your desk. And I thought about, oh, could I find something about getting caught sleeping at church? And, um, you know, how many sleep in church? No, don't answer that. But I could tell you who it is and we'll start from this side and no, it's funny, people will come up and they'll, they'll say to me, and they're like, I'm sorry, pastor, I was, I was going to sleep. And I was like, yeah, I noticed that. Or I didn't notice that, and they told on themselves, and it's kind of funny, they got caught off balance then. So if you get caught sleeping at your desk, here's five suggestions that, uh, that they say you could say is uh, number five. They told me at the blood bank this might happen. I wasn't sleeping, I was meditating on the mission statement and envisioning a new paradigm for the company. Number three, this is just one of those 15-minute power nap things that all the highly productive executives are doing. Number two, I like this one. Woo! Guess I left the top off the whiteout. You probably got here just in time. (laughs) The number one best thing you can say if you get caught sleeping at your desk is, in Jesus' name, amen. (laughs) Getting caught off balance, you know, it's not fun sometimes. Uh, Getting caught off balance is, 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 is this unnerving feeling that happens and it happens physically but it happens spiritually i think often for people that focus is something that deals in that area of our lives and so we're going to look at that focus and balance balance plays a huge role in our ability to focus on the things of god because because here's the thing balance is something that helps us focus on the right things at the right time And if we're not balanced according to God's word, according to to, uh, his will in our life, we're going to feel that in all sorts of areas of our lives. And it's going to show because ultimately our focus, if we're focused on the wrong things, we can't expect to be balanced spiritually according to God's word. And we're going to talk about that today. I want you to think of balance as as a life scale as as this measure and and it can go back and forth and it's constantly adjusting and balance in our lives it, it's this it's this thing that that it has a feeling to it and and balance there's there's when, when something's being balanced there's a constant pressure one way or the other when something's truly being balanced 
Balance feels like being trapped and you can do nothing about it sometimes. This, this idea of, of unbalance, you know, you feel like I, I just, I can't do anything about this. And it's like you're about to fall. It's uneasy. It's unstable. And it can be mental. It can be physical. It can be social. It can be spiritual. Do you realize that being unbalanced, what, what it causes is it causes us to shift in our lives. And some of you relate with this because you, you've gone through this or you may be going, yeah, that's describing me. I'm, I'm having to, I feel this shift in my life. Uh, unbalance can, it, it causes us to reach out. Sometimes people are so desperate, they reach out for anything, whatever's available. And do you know this? God's never caught off balance. That's, a, that's an interesting thought. God is never caught off balance. There is not one thing that has ever happened or will ever happen that God would go, whoa, I didn't see that one coming. Whoa, I didn't, oh, I gotta readjust my plan and my purpose. That will never happen and has never happened to God. Now, that's a, that's a powerful thought because I can tell you there's not one of us that could ever boast that. Now, we could say that, but it wouldn't be true. God will never be unbalanced. He never has and never will apologize for something he has done in the fact that he would go, well, I'm, I, I'm sorry I did that, and I realize that probably caused unbalance. And so he'll never do that because he's never done that. Proverbs, I, I, love, the, I love the word of God. His, the word is truth. The word is believable. Proverbs 11, 1 and 2 says this. It says, a false balance is an abomination. That word abomination means outrage, disgrace, scandal, or eyesore to the Lord. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with the humble is wisdom. An abomination, that's a strong word. A false balance. Now, the context that this scripture here is using is, is this idea of a measure of weight in the context of, of maybe a financial aspect. We can see the light of this proverb in Jesus life and in his ministry when he goes into the temple courts and the money changers are there and they are they're exchanging money they're selling sacrifices and and the requirements of the law at the time and they and and they're charging they're overcharging they're using false balances which is an abomination to God and Jesus we see as he walks in he begins to flip the tables over he begins to get angry, the money changers. He's angry. Why is he angry? Because people are ultimately making it harder for people to come to God. They're making it harder. They're, they're lying. They're misrepresenting. It's an abomination to God, a false balance in our life. And it, I think the, the aspect of applying this lesson, this sermon to our life in the area of focus is we have to make sure that what we present is truth. That what we present is not something other than what it is, because that could be easily called hypocrisy. And sometimes the words that people say are not the words that people mean. And sometimes the fronts that people put out are not the fronts of what's really going on. And I think we need to look at that and need to be challenged at that. Have you ever noticed that usually in a time in your life when you're wanting balance, when you're, you're wanting to readjust because you know things are off kilter, that what's available is not desirable at the time. Sometimes it looks like this as we're trying to walk, maybe picture a tightrope and we're trying to walk this tightrope and, and we know we're going to fall and God says, just, just take hold of faith. Just trust me. Well, no, God, I want something tangible here. I, I, you, you've got to change the circumstance here. If you'll just, just trust me. I don't, I, I don't. And it's undesirable at the time. Lord, just provide money. Trust me. You be faithful. God, get me out of this situation. Trust me in the situation. It's not desirable. But if you just do what God says and you trust him at that level, all of a sudden balance comes. Survival and balance can go hand in hand. By definition, Survival means to continue existence, staying power, or stamina. In the same context, balance could be that same thing. It's, it's, it's extending a power, it's stamina, it's this staying power to stay. Survival, balance. Interesting. With balance like survival. With balance like survival, there is no almost. 
You know, nobody comes out of a battle and goes, whew, I almost survived there. Doesn't happen. It's just like this. Oh, I almost balanced there. Doesn't work. Survival, balance, there's no almost. If you've ever noticed watching a balancing act. Anybody ever go to the circus? Okay, nobody's ever gone to a circus. See, a circus is this thing. <laughs> Come on, you ever gone to a circus? Anybody ever seen a circus? All right, anybody not seen a circus? Okay, a few of you. All right, wait, that was the same hand that went up for the circus and went up for not seeing a circus. So we got imbalance going on. So here's this circus. Circus is happening and they have that, the high wire, the, the, the tight wire, the, 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 here it is and, and they're gonna walk this thing and it has a perfectly good net under it and then they take the net down and then this person begins to walk out on it and you know, they're doing this and you're like, okay, you know, and you're kind of walking, and then, you know, they walk across, and da da and everybody's like, oh, that, yeah, that's great. You know, that was, I mean, that was impressive. Okay, now they're going to do it, and, and they've got a chair, and they take the chair out there, and they begin to balance on the chair. And, and then they ride a bike out there, and they're going to balance on the bike and the chair. And, and then a person comes out, and another person comes out, and they begin to stack this thing up. And all of a sudden, you're going, okay, that's a little scary. And the whole crowd, some people are going, some people are looking through, you know, they're like, some people are like, okay, I can't watch that. Have you ever watch somebody like walk up to the edge of a cliff? Like they, they don't have a fear of heights and they walk up and then like their toes are hanging over and they're like, wow, that is really far. And you're standing off and you're like, Ooh, you're about to throw up because you can't control this, right? You're like, just come back. Okay, a tight road act sometimes has these uncertainties about it, right? And that's what draws us in. And it's this whole idea of controlling the unbalanced aspect and you watch it and you look and they begin to stack the odds and begin to stack it out and can I tell you faith operates the same way there's this aspect of uncertainty God I don't know how trust me okay okay that's what we're talking about day today because there's an aspect of faith and there's an aspect of focus that goes into balancing the things of God in our life and we've got to look at that you may be here and you have a lot of uncertainty in your life. There's a lot of uncertainties. Listen, listen to me. Uncertainty is not an indication of poor balance, but it highlights the need for balance. See, some of you are going, I have uncertainty, so something's wrong. No, not necessarily. It could just mean that you need to trust God in the matter. You need to do what God says, even though that may not be in the natural or you need to simply lean into what God says because you haven't done that yet. Uncertainty is not an indication of poor balance, but it highlights the need for balance in our life. And focusing on the aspect of balance and understanding that faith plays a huge part in this. The Bible speaks about people who it describes are heroes of the faith. Heroes of the faith. Now, I got to tell you, that list is pretty incredible. That list are people that probably in modern terms we wouldn't designate as heroes because quite honestly, all of their lives were pretty imbalanced by our definitions. They were, some of them just quite messed up. Some of them, they, they found God, they trusted God, they're heroes of the faith, but they sure weren't perfect. I mean, too many of us are trying to live this life of faith and we're walking this tightrope of faith and we're going, you know, I'm just not perfect and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give up. I just can't, I can't do this. I don't like the feeling it brings. Can I tell you, the Bible lists out these heroes of the faith and I mean, they were messed up. It goes, it, it talks about Abel. It talks about Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you look at their lives, I mean, they had some dark places. They had some things going on in their life that, was weird. It was strange. But then ultimately they had to trust God and they had to allow God to balance their life back out. It speaks of Joseph, Moses, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. I mean, Hebrews 11, 33 through 40 gives us a picture of what these heroes of the faith went through. It says, who through faith conquered kingdoms enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. 
Women, women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so, they, so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in the deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Obviously, God's plan was Jesus Christ. And through his, through his sacrifice, through his resurrection, they too can experience life. This promise, this balance. Every one of those things I just read, can you imagine walking a tightrope and one of those happen in your life? You're walking this walk that God has called you to and you're going, God, I don't like this. But every single one of them, heroes of the faith, simply took hold of his hand, took hold of what God made available and trusted him. Heroes of the faith. Jesus is our ultimate balance in our life. And I don't know what the uncertainty that you face is this, but if you will focus into him, into his way, into his word, balance will come. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight, that takes focus to do that. I can't just flippantly do that. So everywhere in this scripture, I added that word focus. Let us also lay aside every weight, focus and sin, which clings so closely and focus and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, it takes focus. I gotta look to him. When all these things are happening, I have to look to Jesus. I gotta focus the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. I mean, that took focus. To endure something, it takes focus, despising the shame, focus, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And so many times people throw their hands up. I can't do this. I can't, I just, I don't wanna do this anymore. And they're halfway out on this, on this rope. They're halfway out on this calling. They're halfway out. I can't do this anymore. You know, one of the most difficult things to do on a tightrope is to turn. Because at some point, all weight is shifting. All center is changing and trying to turn. I think it's interesting that the Bible talks about putting your hand to the plow and looking back. That's not good. God's called you to this. He'll get you through it. I'll say that again. If God's called you to this, he'll get you through it, church. But you got to focus. You got to focus. You got to trust him. The problem with balance is that we all define it differently in our lives. I want to close with this. You know, it's balance for you, maybe being able to make decisions and, and be involved without hurry, worry, or inconvenience. I mean, maybe that's how you've defined balance in your life. And you say, well, that's a good thing. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe you've defined balance as something that, that a diploma or a position or power would bring. If I just had that, then my life would be balanced. If this would just occur, then, then I would be balanced. If my marriage was like this, then this would be balanced. If I just had more of this, if I just had less of this, then I would be balanced. And we play this game going back and forth when in reality, the focus has to be on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the Bible says. How you define balance is critical. See, where your greatest focus is will give you insight into where your definition of balance for your life is. Some people say, if I just had more time, I could do. If I just had this, that, I'm telling you, where your greatest focus is will tell you sometimes not only where your greatest imbalance is, but where your greatest need to trust him 
gifts. Hebrews 11, 1 says this. It says, now faith. I could, I could insert that word, now balance. Now faith, now balance is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions, the conviction of things not seen. See, God has laid out a specific pathway for you. He's laid it out. He's called you. He's laid it forth, not for you to fall. See, there's too many people, they, they focus on the wrong thing when the, when the challenges begin. When the testing comes, they want to quit. Why do I have to go through this? I mean, the testing of our faith, the book of James tells us, develops perseverance, and that must complete its work. There's this aspect that when I'm in the middle of this walk, that we call life. Sometimes there's this aspect of it. I've got to trust him. As I focus on him, the author, perfecter of my faith, I find my balance. I find my balance. 